Have you ever asked yourself, what should I focus on the most when studying for an exam? In this video, we're going to talk all about how you can identify the most important concepts that you'll see on a cybersecurity certification exam. Make sure that after this video, you keep watching the rest of the series on how to pass cybersecurity certifications. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements, you want resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. Also, if you're trying to break into cybersecurity, check out my Getting Started page for free resources and a copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. All right, let's get into the video. Let's face it, cybersecurity certification exams can make people pretty nervous. After all, the exams aren't cheap, and especially if you're on the hook for the fee, you don't want to mess up. But how do you know where to focus the majority of your time? Let's take a look at one of the best known cybersecurity certifications the CISSP. When we go to the website for the CISSP and we look at the covered domains, we can see that anything and everything in cybersecurity could be tested. But is that actually likely? Of course not. Almost every certification vendor has a percentage breakdown of how much each domain is going to be covered on the exam. So for instance, here on the CISSP website, if we click the CISSP English exam outline and we scroll down here, we can see there's a percentage breakdown of each domain that's on the exam. Of course, every exam is going to vary because some people are going to get more questions in certain areas than others. And especially when we're talking about adaptive exams, it's based on how well you're doing as far as the difficulty of the questions. But it can still really give us a good idea of what's coming. And specific to these domains for the CISSP, if we see one exam is worth 15% or in any other case, maybe 20% or whatever the case is, and then we compare that to a 10% domain, so a significant difference, we can make the assumption that there's going to be a lot more information and a lot more questions coming from those higher percentage domains. All right, so we know we can refer to the certification vendor website for percentage breakdowns, but what else can we do? How about looking at the official study guides and materials and seeing how many pages are in each section? So it's kind of the same way, right? If you have a certain domain in a chapter, and it's really hit hard, well, then that's gonna make sense that a lot of questions are gonna come from that. If I see 100 pages dedicated to that one domain, and I see 15 pages dedicated to some other domain, you can bet I'm gonna spend a lot of time on that heavier subject. Now, if you aren't looking at the official study guides, you need to be careful because some authors are gonna focus on certain subjects more than others, and that might not be accurate or consistent with the exam. With better trainers, we don't typically see this happening, but it's possible. And that's why you need to use multiple resources whenever possible. After you review the study materials, it's time to research reviews on certifications. Again, with the example of the CISSP, we're gonna find a lot of people giving hints about the exam, saying it's a managerial focused exam and to focus on the actual safety of people and don't dive deep into the technical weeds of the information. Not only do these useful tips help out and just telling you what's coming, but it also helps to lower your anxiety because you're actually a little bit more familiar with the exam and how people have experienced it. Now, these strategies are strategies that I've used to pass several certifications, including CompTIA, Cisco, ISC Squared, ISACA, and GIAC. Don't underestimate the knowledge that you can gain from these different strategies because honestly, they don't take that much time to actually do. And who wants to take the exam again? Nobody. Question of the day, have you used any of these strategies before? Are there strategies that I missed? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked all about how you can identify the most important concepts that are gonna be on your cybersecurity certification exam. Remember, it's better to prepare a little bit more upfront and pass your exam the first time than having to go back after a failure. Make sure that you keep watching the rest of the series on how to pass cybersecurity certifications. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements. If you want resume reviews, career advice, or consulting services, and I'll see you next time.